Vladimir Ivanovich Romanov is a Soviet and Russian maniac who committed at least 12 murders involving abuse in 1991 and 2001-2005. He was born on December 5, 1950 in the village of Orekovka, Guryevsky District, Kaliningrad Region. He lived in the town of Bagrationovsk, Kaliningrad Region. In 1991 he committed a double murder of teenage girls, whose bodies he buried. Due to the absence of the bodies, the victims were considered missing, and the case remained unsolved. Also in 1991, Romanov raped a 12-year-old girl and tried to strangle her. The victim survived and gave a description of the perpetrator. Romanov was arrested and sentenced to 10 years in prison. In prison, he was lowered. He was released in 2001. He started to engage in private transportation and began a new series of murders. In 2001, Mushroom hunters came across in the forest on the mutilated corpse of 17-year-old Olga K. The examination showed that before her death, the girl was raped. By whom? Then it was possible to establish only one thing. Olga, a student of the Kaliningrad Trade College, every weekend went to her parents in Mamanovo. On the day that became her last, she did not catch the bus and hitch it a ride. On March 15, 2002, the next victim, 13-year-old Irina L., a resident of Dolgorokova settlement, was found in a roadside ditch near Berlin Highway. The police found out that shortly before her death, the girl had been waiting for a bus and then got into a car. Near the body was found in tread print. And the next day, on the side of the same Berlin Highway, a scrap metal collector found another corpse. Irina T., a resident of Pribrezhnoye, a 19-year-old medical college student, had been on the wanted list for a month ever since she caught a cab and went to a disco in Kaliningrad. Then, 15-year-old Anya P., a girl from the village of Vladimirovo, died. On April 9, 2002, she went to a neighboring village to a friend's birthday party. In the evening, after the party, she went home and disappeared. Her remains would be found only a year later, near the village of Krasnoznamensky, 300 meters from the road. The mournful list was growing. On February 15, 2004, 12-year-old Jana S., a resident of Dolgorukovo village, went missing. On March 13, 2004, the corpse of 13-year-old Tanya E. was found in a garden near the village cemetery. The girl had been strangled with a shoelace. Witnesses claimed that she was catching a car trying to get home. On April 6, 2004, the burnt corpse of 15-year-old Elena K. from Nevskoya village was found in a field near the village of Slavyanivka. She had disappeared a month before having gone to visit a friend in a neighboring village. In August 2004, people found the corpse of 14-year-old Valentina A. A month later, the burnt body of 18-year-old Natalia F. from Chernyakovsky district was found in a pit near the village of Pyatidorozhnoye. In September 2005, 12-year-old Galia R. disappeared on her way to the store from the village of Chistopoli to the village of Pravdinsk. Her corpse was discovered only two months later. There were other victims as well. It must be said that the similar handwriting of the criminal, he raped and killed, especially not counting on getting rich at the expense of his victims, immediately led the detectives to the idea of a maniac. It would seem that it is time to sound the alarm, to notify the population, explaining the seriousness of the situation and demanding that parents do not let girls go alone on a dangerous road. And that the girls, seeing a slowing car on a deserted road, run away with all their legs, instead of smiling trustingly at their own death. However, the cops do not like to cooperate with the press. They say that unnecessary excitement around the problem prevents them from working. Again, in the press may slip unnecessary information that can alert the criminal, and then he will lie low. But, the concept of preventing crime from the vocabulary of our law enforcement officers has long since disappeared. And even those who are still catching criminals, rather than imitating vigorous activity, it is more important to catch the killer, rather than to save the potential victim. Besides, sadly enough, a maniac is very difficult to figure out. His appearance is usually unremarkable, and his biography is quite tolerable. And the main thing is that the system, which functioned properly 10 or 15 years ago, when Kaliningrad criminal investigation was considered the best in the country and when all suspicious elements were under the hood, is practically destroyed. Otherwise, Romanov should inevitably have come to the attention of the detectives. First of all, 
He was a private cab driver who worked part-time as a cab driver in the evenings. And the detectives were sure from the very beginning that the criminal was traveling on wheels. Secondly, in 1987, he had already been convicted for sexual acts against minors, forcing girls to take his penis in their mouths. He got nine years in prison, got out in 1996. Thirdly, he had a favorable appearance, elderly, short, neatly dressed, with Pushkin's sideburns. That is, to many victims, he probably seemed to be a kind grandfather, a kind of God's dandelion. And this explains why well-mannered girls who knew that strange men should beware of them, and Grandpa did not seem dangerous to them, got into his car quietly. But there was no system, and we had to wait for the maniac to puncture himself. So, in fact, and happened, when Romanov outlined himself another victim in the village Lugovoye Guryevsky district. This 23-year-old girl, looking much younger than her years, lives in the village of Domnovo and works in Kaliningrad. That evening, as usual, she took the 101 bus to Lugovoy, called her parents and said that she would get to the village of Tishino by hitchhiking, which she had already caught. Romanov was driving the hitchhiker. Soon he turned off the main road near the village of Morisco. He took out a cigarette and asked the passenger to look for his lighter, which had allegedly fallen on the floor. When the girl bent down, Romanov hit her on the head with a pre-prepared hammer. Fortunately, the blow was tangential and the girl had time to press the hot button on her cell phone and screamed, Daddy, he's trying to kill me. Romanov kept hitting her, choking her. The girl fought back. She managed to break free. She jumped out of the car, ran down the highway. Grandpa caught up with her in three jumps, fell on the asphalt, dragged her back into the cabin of his Audi 80. She screamed, fought back from the last strength, and cars drove by. But no one even thought to slow down and see what the man in the front seat was doing with a girl who looked like a schoolgirl in the twilight. But I guess Romanov was afraid someone would stop. So he decided to drive away from the highway. When he was distracted to turn the steering wheel, the girl fell out of the car on the move, rolled into the ditch. That's where her parents picked her up. The father, having heard on the cell phone desperate daughter's cry, flew on his car at a speed of 200 kilometers. Immediately the parents called the police and took their daughter to the trauma center of the Kaliningrad Multiprofile Hospital. There soon came the staff of Guryevsky Rovdi. The girl was questioned. But, as it turned out a little later, her statement about attempted murder was lost in the police. The crime was not even even registered. But the girl, who works in a store selling auto parts, remembered the car's make and license plate number. With the help of an acquaintance of a police officer, the father established the address of the owner of the Audi 80. He drove up with his daughter to see if it was the same one. It turned out to be the right one. The father of the miraculously saved girl called the police. We have the address of the criminal. Which one? Asked in Goryevsky Rovd. There is no statement from you. Then the father called the Moskovsky ROVD. The criminal and his family lived on Mukomolnaya Street in the Moskovsky district of Kaliningrad. He explained the situation. The seizure team arrived three hours later. When Grandpa was taken, he, Vladimir Ivanovich Romanov, a carpenter of SMU No. 9, was calmly drinking tea. Soldiers in helmets, flak jackets, with automatic rifles and batons, who broke into his cozy apartment, caused him genuine amazement. He was not expecting a visit from the police. Apparently, years of unpunished bloody hunting had accustomed him to the idea that he was getting away with everything and that this luck would last forever. Perhaps it would have been. But all these years, the father of one of Romanov's victims, Vladimir Tereshin, could not rest. In the past, a criminal investigation officer then, a private detective, he had been bombarding the prosecutor's office with applications since 2002 demanding that the case of his daughter's murder not be suspended, i.e. actually stopped, advocating the creation of a long-lasting task force. He himself helped the police in any way he could. And, probably, thanks to this, among other things, the brigade of important people, urgently summoned to the Moscow ROVD, began to stab the detained Romanov not on a single episode, but on serial murders. He floated at once. The NK editorial office had at its disposal the minutes of one of his interrogations. It's creepy to read it. A man who is not registered with a narcologist or psychiatrist, 
who has no chronic diseases, born and raised by a woman like the rest of us. Married, raised a son, talks about killing little girls in a completely mundane way. And here's the other thing. Maniac killers have been romanticized or demonized a lot lately. Dr. Lecter from Silence of the Lambs became the first in a long line of fatal serial ripper, elegant as London Jack and mysterious as the French Iron Mask. But the same Romanov with his seven classes of high school was neither a sophisticated aesthete nor a fanatic obsessed with a crazy idea. So, a primitive creature with a human appearance and animal instincts, plus shift, the thirst to humiliate and kill. And so this monster goes out on his animal path, which, thanks to the policies of law enforcement, turns into a green street for him. And the road to his personal paradise is paved with children's bones. So, says the maniac Romanov, a few years ago in the afternoon on the car Ford Fiesta, or Opel Cadet, I was driving on the road Kaliningrad Mamonovo in the direction of Kaliningrad. Near the village of Piatidorozhnoi, I saw a girl of about 14 walking towards Mamonovo. I offered her a ride. I decided that if she got into the car, I would kill her. She agreed to my offer and said that she had to go to Mamonovo. On the way to Mamonovo, I turned off the road to the right and drove into a deserted place. There I forced her to undress with a knife and had sexual intercourse with her, after which I killed her by stabbing her in the neck. I hid the corpse in a bush. Some time later I was driving a Ford Fiesta or Opel Cadet or Opel Record on the Kaliningrad Polesk road towards Polesk. In the village of Konstantinovka, I saw a girl of about 12-13 years old standing there. I offered her a ride. I decided that if she got into the car, I would kill her. She agreed to my offer and said that she had to go to Yaroslavl. On the way, I drove through Yaroslavskoye, turned off the road to the right, and drove into a deserted place in a forest area. There I forced her to take my penis in her mouth, after which I killed her, strangled her with my hands. I may have used a lanyard to strangle her. I hid the corpse in the ditch and covered it with stones. Some time later, I was driving a Ford Fiesta or Opel Cadet in Pribrezhny settlement. At a bus stop, I saw a girl in her 20s standing there. I offered her a ride to Kaliningrad. I decided that if she got into the car, I would kill her. She agreed to my offer and said that she had to go to Kaliningrad to the south station. I brought her to a deserted place on the Berlinki Highway near the village of Medovoye. There I forced her to take my penis in her mouth, after which I killed her by hitting her on the head several times with a pipe. I hid the corpse in a ditch. Some time later I was driving a Ford Fiesta or Opel record in Dolgorukovo settlement. In the settlement I saw a girl of about 14 standing there. I offered her a ride. I decided that if she got into the car, I would kill her. She agreed to my offer and said that she had to go to Dubrovka. I drove her to a deserted place near the Chapayevo settlement where I killed her by stabbing her several times in the neck. I hid the body in a ditch. Some time later I was driving a Ford Fiesta on the Poles Gvardesk road towards Gvardesk. In the village of Belovo, I saw a girl of about 12 and 13 years old standing there. I offered her a ride. I decided that if she got into the car, I would kill her. She agreed to my offer and said that she had to go to Slavinsk. On the way, I turned off the road to the left and drove into a deserted place near the village of Ivanovka. There I forced her to take my penis in her mouth, after which I killed her by strangling her with my hands. I hid the corpse in a ditch. Some time later, I was driving a Ford Fiesta on the Bagrationovsk Dolgorukovo Nivenskoya road towards the village of Nivenskoya. On the way I saw a girl of about 14 standing there. I offered her a ride. I decided that if she got into the car, I would kill her. She agreed to my offer and said that she had to go to Vladimirovo. On the way, before reaching Vladimirovo, I turned off the road to the right and drove into an abandoned garden near the cemetery. There I killed her, strangled her with my hands. I also used a lanyard to strangle her. As far as I remember, I did not commit any violent sexual acts with her, but I do not exclude that I could have done so. I hid the body in the grass in the garden. Some time later, I was driving a Ford Fiesta on the Kaliningrad Mamonovo road towards Mamonovo. On the way to Ladushkin, I saw a girl of about 14 standing there. I offered her a ride. I decided that if she got into the car, I would kill her. She agreed to my offer and said that she had to go to Mamonovo. On the way, after passing Piatidorozhnoye, I turned off the road to the right and drove into a wooded area. There I killed her, strangled her with my hands. I dumped the corpse in the pond. 
Some time later I was driving a Ford Fiesta on the Pravdinsk Kaliningrad road through Domnovo, towards Kaliningrad. In Pravdinsk I saw a girl of about 12-13 years old standing there. I offered her a ride. I decided that if she got into the car, I would kill her. She agreed to my offer and said that she had to go to some village, the name of which I don't remember now. On the way I drove through the village, drove a few kilometers away, turned off the road to the left into a field and drove into a deserted place. There I forcibly had sexual intercourse with her, after which I killed her by strangling her with my hands. I also used a lanyard to strangle her. I hid the corpse in the grass in the field. On September 25, 2006, in the evening, I was driving an Audi 80 in Lugovoy Settlement. In Lugovoy Settlement, I saw a girl aged 20, 22 standing there. I offered her a ride. I decided that if she got into the car, I would kill her. She agreed to my offer and said that she had to go to the village of Tishino, Bagrationovsky district. On the way near the village of Mariskoye, I stopped and asked her to pick up a lighter, after which I began to hit her on the head with a hammer in order to kill her. She managed to break free and run away. I tried to catch her, but I failed. After that, afraid of being arrested, I drove away. On the way, I found her bag in the car. I took all the money from the wallet and threw away the bag with other things. I confess my guilt in full, I repent sincerely for the crimes I committed. Romanov did not live to see the trial, he deed in the pre-trial detention center. Either he hanged himself, or he was helped.